playing role-playing games, I'm quite literally creating a world. And I get this practice of stepping out of my comfort zone into worlds that were formerly not conceived. I do a lot. I'm a seventh grade reading teacher, poet, youth pastor, also in grad school. You'd think that I wouldn't have much time for hobbies, but I figured it out. I love to rock climb, write, read, play board games. My family comes from Liberia. They had to run. We moved around quite a bit. They're putting a lot of trust in something that isn't yet, that things actually will be better. I've lived in the same house for my entire life. Both my parents, very, very nerdy. Not your stereotypical African-American family. Mostly I do hip play, so that's hip hop and ballet. He wanted to make ballet applicable to a more modern audience, essentially black people. You know, he wanted to bring ballet to his people. My first experience with poetry, there were people up on stage sharing themselves in a way that unlocked something in me. You feel a sense of freedom because you can express yourself in a way that doesn't require words. What a lot of people want out of art is an emotional reaction. That's what Hipley gives people. They're like, oh, this is my favorite song. Oh my gosh, they're on their toes. One of the first things I learned how to do and practiced to death was how to moonwalk backwards. One time I started moonwalking on stage. So I was like, I don't remember what I was doing. The crowd loved it. Because I have to wear so many different hats, it's almost as if I'm a part of a performance always. Point shoes always come pink. That's just how they come. It's just tradition. It's kind of like if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Except it's a little broken. There's a teeny crack in there. There's a lot of black ballerinas advocating we should wear our skin color. You only see very, very skinny people do point. Hip like can show people there's a place for curvy ballerinas. Here's you on the stage. A lot of people who come from a place of privilege underestimate the impact that representation has because they've always had it. It's easier for people to understand people in boxes. I'm countering a lot of assumptions. Every space that I step into, there's an assumption that people are making about me. I kind of like doing that kind of surprise thing on stage. Where they're like, wait a second, I thought this was? It's like, yeah, you thought. <laughs> It's really important to me to be responsible with the hope that I've been given. Doors didn't just open for me. There was somebody in front of me that taught me how to turn the handle, and I want to continue that tradition. So a lot of my work is trying to open those doors for myself, and then I hold the door open with my body. And I'm like, how many people can we get in here? I learn hope by watching the women in my family dance marveled as they spun, swelled, and stretched themselves towards everything. The tide of their hips moved by some song worthy of their sweat. The trust with which they travel, the hope that they weave into every prayer, lyric, and step can make you believe that God is right there.